Um, before I get into some housekeeping duties, the, the purpose of today really is to explore some ways um, that healthcare organisations are transforming their administrative processes with our AI-powered speech technology. The benefit for all of us um, as we get into this is we'll have a clear understanding of how this technology can address some of the key challenges you as medical practitioners are, are really likely to be experiencing. Um, before I sort of in introduce Liam Murphy from TPRO, I'll just a couple of, cover off a couple of housekeeping duties. Firstly, the session will run for, for pretty hard 30 minutes, um, so uh, really appreciate um, your time and jumping on to, to, to be involved today. Uh, we'll have a 15-minute uh, question-answer time at the end, which is uh, where we'll, we'll be able to cover off and throw some questions at Liam and the team. Um, you'll notice uh, down the bottom of the screen a... Uh, an opportunity to ask uh, some questions Q and A button. So if you want to send your questions through there, we'll address those as they come through um, at the appropriate times. But uh, we'll hold a, a vast majority of those questions off uh, to, to, towards the end of the session. Um, it's uh, really exciting for us to be able to have uh, Liam and the team uh, on board today. Um, and I'll, I'll introduce uh, Liam now so that we can uh, get into that. We'll just sort of. I know we're only a minute in, but there might be a couple of others. We've got a great number on online at the moment. Um, but firstly, I'll, I'll hand over to Liam and uh, and, and introduce uh, Liam, who's the uh, head of sales for TPRO. Um, Liam, it'd be great if you could give us a quick overview of TPRO and, and who you guys are. Yeah, um, great. Uh, so thanks for the intro introduction, Scott. Um, thanks to everyone uh, for uh, taking the time out of your your busy schedule. It's very much appreciated. Um, so Liam Murphy is my name. I'm the, the sales manager at T-Pro. Uh, also on today's call is Jonathan Larby, our chief, chief executive officer, as well as Isaac Boss, who heads up our international operations in the APAC uh, region. Um, so nice to meet everyone and uh, look forward to uh, obviously telling you a little about TPRO. Um, in short, uh, I guess TPRO is a global provider of healthcare technology and services. Um, we have offices uh, in Ireland, uh, the UK uh, and Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so our experience in successful partnerships um, include over 600 large acute mental health and community public and private healthcare organizations, meaning that we understand the challenges that you guys face. Um, we deliver productivity solutions, including digital dictation, speech recognition, medical transcription services, uh, as well as clinic management, telehealth or virtual clinic uh, consultation softwares, as well as workflow automation tools, which help healthcare organization, organizations uh, in reaching your key objectives. Great. So, Liam, just before we jump into into getting into the speech enabled clinic, clinical documentation, as you got there, just for the audience, do you want to just give us a quick um, overview of what AI is and, and how you see this impacting the staff and roles as, as medical practitioners? Yeah, I, I'll maybe take that one, Scott. So, sure, thanks. AI, AI essentially, as we see it, is it, it's it's a bit of a funny term. And it's banded around and everyone everyone says, you know, AI this, AI that. And it's, it's become very sexy lately. But in, for our purposes, what it is, is it's the ability to automate any human-centric tasks. And beyond just automating with rules, which are essentially something that another human has to codify those rules and build them all out, you can AI is the process why, but whereby we actually teach machines and teach computers um, to the ability to learn processes, and that learning is adaptive over time. So AI is increasingly getting better over time, rather than a heuristic approach to something where you set a number of rules and then you adjust those rules when you realize they're wrong and you have conflicts and all this kind of thing. The AI is that ability to learn and the ability to continue to learn over time. So it gets better as it progresses. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I'll hand back to you, Liam. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes. So I guess it's just at a very sort of high level um so what the topics are we want to obviously discuss today is why speech-enabled clinical documentation makes sense now. So as Jonathan mentioned, 
Um, we leverage AI-powered speech recognition to enable clinicians to more easily document patient encounters. Um, so the pressure is obviously on for all healthcare organizations to improve the quality of clinical documentation um, so ensuring continuous uninterrupted patient care, especially during difficult times such as, as COVID. Um, for healthcare professionals, high quality, accurate, up-to-date patient records enable better teamwork and collaboration, uh, support for point-of-care decision-making and boosts overall efficiency, which enable clear and, and complete information exchange in a, a timely manner. And um, for patients, access to their own health data is obviously key. Um, complete records, enhancing communication, uh, trust and continuity of care leading to better outcomes and, and obviously improved safety. And um, But obviously for everyone in Australia's healthcare system, comprehensive clinical documentation makes claiming and budgeting more efficient and improves regulatory, legal and financial reporting and sharing inf- relevant information with um, the My Health record uh, much easier as well. So, so just on that, um, in terms of health care professionals, um, Liam, obviously efficiency and, and, and the people being stretched beyond belief. I mean, we're seeing that in the Australian market now with COVID. Um, what are the things that, that your solution actually takes away from them? They should be give, giving consideration to, to making um, from an efficiency gain perspective. Yeah, and look, I'll actually answer that question uh, with a with the question. Um, if so, I'm going to uh, ask the 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 audience today. Um, what percentage of doctors or nurses' time would you say is spent on documentation? Um, now, normally when I ask this, nobody ever answers, <laughs> so I'm not expecting anyone to, to jump out. Um, so, shockingly, uh, research shows that that healthcare professionals spend more than 50% of their working day creating, reviewing, and updating clinical documentation. So, it's, it's a pretty shocking statistic when you when you think of that. Um, in America, a busy doctor can produce enough clinical documentation to fill 40 books of 400 pages each year. So, that's the equivalent of 7.2 million words. Um, whereas our speech recognition wow. technology allows healthcare professionals to capture patient data and complete documentation uh, three times faster or over three times faster than typing and with greater accuracy and completeness. And um, so just using voice to text, they can navigate more quickly in the, the EHR or their own uh, PAS or other clinical systems. They can use advanced voice commands to automate repeat functions or jump to specific screens. They can call up pre-configured templates and associated documents, uh, often insert re- repeated standard texts. Uh, so virtually all mouse actions can be replaced with voice commands and, and tailored to, to create a completely personal size workflow. Um, so the use of speech recognition also improves the, the quality of documentation by reducing repetition and the, you know the potential for errors and uh, eliminating a duplication of effort as well. So not only does it streamline, streamline the process of re- recording structured information in forms and, and health records, but speech recognition also encourages healthcare professionals to document the patient story more fully. Um, also just uh, as a result of COVID, um, you know, particularly clinicians at work, you know, it, it, it's led to dissatisfaction and so on. Uh, and a substantial 80% of healthcare professionals say good patient relationships are the most satisfying part of their job. However, many of or many are becoming demotivated and frustrated because of administrative overload and a consequent lack of time to spend with patients. And so we, our speech recognition improves day-to-day working uh, lives of healthcare professionals by enabling them to produce uh, real-time, detailed, accurate clinical reports as quickly as they as they can think and speak. And um, so it puts them in control, giving them more time to focus on patients and um, confident that the documentation they produce sets the standard for, for better quality care. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. That last one, I was going to ask you about that because right now, you know, that's, that's a lot of, in, in the Australian market uh, or Australian healthcare system, it's a you know, danger of being overrun from this third wave of COVID or whatever, whichever way we describe it as. But um, certainly satisfaction is something that, you know, you can take, as you say, a big chunk of that administrative requirement away from them. It leaves them to do what they're there to do, which is actually treat, treat patients. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah. even actually just a, another sort of statistics as uh, so the time healthcare professionals dedicate to interacting directly with patients is shrinking and can actually or is uh, can account for less than 13 percent of their day um, so you know surveys or research is so is shown so it's it's quite a uh, quite an alarming statistic really yeah that, that's actually uh, resonated with uh, GPS in recent time here in, in, in Australia where they you know the, the, the average consult time is actually uh, being reduced because there's so much pressure on them to churn more, see more people. There's so more, many more people coming through the system. So it sounds like that would be a, a significant benefit. 
The, the obvious question next, Liam, is, well, what's the impact for the patients? Because if it impacts the health professionals significantly, how does it impact the patients? Yeah, sure. So I guess using speech-enabled clinical documentation frees clinicians from significant red tape and, and gives them more time to observe, listen, interpret the patient's stories, so putting the patient firmly back at the, the centre of care. Um, our speech recognition also encourages complete capture of the patient's story, so both the, the detailed narrative as well as the structured data preset forms and, and templates required. Um, so for complex cases where patients require multiple treatment protocols, and even the support of multidisciplinary teams, that the whole team benefits from having a, a more comprehensive or accurate picture of the patient and their needs, which, which leads to improvement uh, or improved treatment coordination and better results as well. Um, our speech recognition not only actually frees up clinicians' time and the ability to focus on the patient, but it also helps improve care. Um, so as the patients hear what is being said and recorded in their, in their own notes during a consultation, they become more informed and, and engaged in their, their own case management. And so as a result they're more likely to act, you know, actively participate in, in treatment uh, and to experience improved health outcomes. And so on that, then it increases the value of that actual visit or that any interaction with the, with, with the, uh, with the health practitioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what are, you, you sort of, we sort of touched on a couple of the trends around the Australian healthcare space at the moment, but what are some of the other trends that you guys are seeing? Yeah, so obviously... Um, you know, healthcare across the the globe are, are trying to accelerate the you know adoption of of e health, and um, so digitized uh, clinical documentation is, is the, obviously the, the cornerstone of Australia's vision for this fully integrated national e health network, and um, that will or is. The goal is to deliver productivity, benefits for healthcare and, and quality outcomes for patients. Um, ongoing investment by all Australian governments in the My Health Record shared EMR demonstrates that you know their commitment to this vision and the pressure is on to, to show how this investment is paying off in today's tough financial environment. Um, there are obviously technical and, and cultural barriers to the up uptake and adoption of the the My Health Record and other shared care record systems, but simplifying and naturalizing the user interface using speech to, to input the data and um, certainly removes the greatest barrier of all, which we feel you know that's overloading the, the healthcare profession with more administrative red tape. And so we feel you know speech recognition is fast becoming one of the most used tools in the quest for e-health adoption because it improves clinical documentation, um, enabling clinicians to document the, the patient encounter at anywhere at any time um, using their preferred de device. Um, you know, and it puts healthcare professionals back in control and ensuring that there's a you know fast and greater take up of the national system to more quickly return the, the investment. Yeah. Um, again, we touched on employee satisfaction before, but I mean, one of the things from a trend perspective is there is a shortage of uh, qualified people who've had to go back to the well and ask retired nurses and medical practitioners back into the space. I mean, what sort of trends do you see around that globally as well that you think might be coming our way? Yeah, it's funny you touched on just the employee satisfaction. Um, you know, uh, speech rec is proven help avoid burnout um you know there's according to beyond blue um australian doctors are actually exhibiting high levels of, of burnout including mm -hmm. emotional exhaustion cynicism and almost actually half of, of australian young doctors uh, may or suffer from burnout uh, according to you know major mental health surveys um, and especially as a result of the the covid19 pandemic um mm -hmm. a lot of these clinicians are self-reported you know, monitor to, to severe symptoms of depression, anxiety, or PTSD. So the use of speech recognition or, or tools like speech recognition, which ultimately reduce this burden of documentation, enable clinicians to um, consult patients, do essentially what they they were paid to do, to do um, is, is, is a key aspect of that. I think, well, Scott, you can, you can look at the kind of macro trends on this as well and say, that populations generally, globally, you know, both Australia, UK, everywhere, are getting bigger. And their mm. populations are growing, they're getting bigger, they're getting older. The requirement for healthcare is increasing all the time. Uh, but as you say, there's the, the pace of growth in the providers isn't increasing. So there's a shortage mm. of providers to provide the care that people need. So the only way to, to really address this is with technology because human capital just isn't scalable. So you yep. need to you need to look at ways of, and obviously this, this whole webinar is, is centered around kind of speech recognition aspects, but within the platform, we look to automate all sorts of different steps. And it's those little yep. micro savings at every step of a workflow. If I can save you 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there, 
you know, 30 seconds at the end of a consultation across 50 patients in a day, then, you know, you might save up to an hour of clinician time and that hour can then be deployed elsewhere. So it's, it's how can you, how can you, it's not rather than forcing technology on people and forcing technology on clinicians because you want to improve the quality of the data you're capturing or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. how can you improve and expedite those workflows with the use of technology and how can you layer it in in a in a very meaningful way for them yeah okay that's great thank you jonathan and that's a really good segue into um liam i mean how could a solution work but for, for the uninitiated and not understanding one well, how, how does it work yeah so i guess for, for, for all of the above reasons or aforementioned speech recognition is rightly regarded as a, a a plausible or possible solution um i guess our take as jonathan mentioned is that it's not a one size fits all um and so we offer unlike other suppliers in the market we offer a, a single technology and services platform and um, which handles all this the stages of the, the process so from creation uh, to distribution and, and, and every step in between um we feel that the platform or the platform acts as an integrated extension to um, you know any PaaS or leading EPR systems. So we've you know integrations with the likes of Cerner's, Epix, Meditex, a lot of the the big EPR players in the market. Um, and this reduces the burden of documentation, enabling healthcare organisations to to capture the patient story with greater flexibility, speed, uh, accuracy, and quality. Um, so as I mentioned, we're not forcing, or as Jonathan mentioned, we're not forcing uh, technology on particular users. We our goal is to provide and support a versatile workflow process not just for speech recognition, but also for digital dictation, medical transcription services. Um, and uh, as I said, the goal is to uh, offer users choice and options without forcing them into a particular mode of documentation, which we feel uh, will bring greater efficiency and reduce the, the workflow for all involved in the production of, of medical uh, letters. Um, we have some you know, example workflows listed here, just in terms of how speech recognition may be deployed across um, in any number of uh, healthcare settings. Um, so our speech is designed for, you know, speed, accuracy, and flexibility um, with personalized vocabularies and templates that can be shared across, you know, your healthcare organization. And users or clinicians or healthcare professionals can access a single unified voice profile, uh, which is immediately accessible to, across all clinical workflows, care settings, and devices. And um, some of the examples, as I said, include the likes of our front and speech recognition technology, Um, So this enables healthcare professionals to produce documentation directly in any EHR um, using, you know, a a small non-intrusive dictation window and they can access their voice profile uh, across a variety of devices and use their voice to create and self-edit and sign reports directly in the EHR. Um, They can also execute voice-based navigation commands, you know, insert standardized boilerplate text, and if needs be, they can also correct the the speech recognition text uh, all by, by voice. Excellent. So our platform is also is designed as a mobile first speech recognition system and um, which ha- lets healthcare professionals document the patient counter at the point of care or using their preferred mobile device. Um, clinician or healthcare professional engagement is, and satisfaction is greatly enhanced by giving access to key demographic and clinical data using their preferred mobile device, enabling them to safely identify patients and dictate and approve letters while on the move. So they're not tied to a desk. Traditionally, so many speech recognition suppliers in the market uh, require uh, clinicians to document the encounter at their desk, whereas with TPRO, we're providing flexible mobile options, enabling them to dictate using their you know, smartphone device or tablet and document the, point of, uh, document the patient encounter at, at the point of care. So, so just on that, I'd imagine from a from an implementation perspective, when it comes to I- introducing that, because they are likely to be on handheld devices that most people own, it's a it's a, it's a really good way of being able to get everyone access to it rather than having to pr- you know provide that hardware. Yeah, yeah, and if you think of the, the cost savings, sorry, Jonathan, mm. I was just, uh, just say the cost savings. <laughs> <laughs> makes a huge uh, difference to adoption uh, as well. So, yeah. you, if you if you're enabling clinicians to work mm-hmm. in the way that they see fit and the way that works for them, then then that's a, that's a huge benefit um, rather than trying to force a new technology on them. Um, and one of the kind of key things to probably note is Liam's showing two or three different sort of of our more typical workflows here but you wouldn't have one doctor using one of those and another doctor using another one. The reality is that doctors work across different 
care That's setting. Fun, yeah. So they'll have, you know, they'll have their ward rounds where they want to go bed to bed with a mobile and just kind of do their little notation. They'll have these kind of correspondence workflows where they're at the desk and they're doing correspondence and letters that need to be nicely formatted. So they need to see those in real time. And then they'll be working in the AHR and they might be working in the community or in a hospital. So yep. you, you have to cover off as a platform and as a, as a solution provider rather than a technology provider, we have to cover off all of those use cases for one individual doctor and have a unified profile where they can access the platform and access the system via yep. various different modalities. Yeah. Uh, very good. Liam, did you have something else you wanted to add to that? No, no. Look, I was just about to say that, uh, you know, we have some health organizations who've, who've saved a ton of money um, by leveraging these cost neutral dictation sources. So so often they would go out and buy handheld devices, uh, which mm-hmm. may cost, you know, three or four hundred dollars you know, per device. Um, so quite expensive, obviously, if you multiply the, by the, the number of clinicians who, who uh, would have previously required one. Um, and so most clinicians prefer to hold one less device in their pocket, so i.e. their mobile phone, and and use that to, to capture the, the patient narrative. So again, it's just providing flexibility and not forcing them into a particular mode of, of capturing the, the, the narrative. Yep. Um, so the, the, the slide I actually have on show here is our, um, so our speech recognition can be used as a correspondence tool. Um, so predominantly our T-Pro solution is we provide web and mobile interfaces, which acts as an integrated extension to any PaaS or EPR. And this enables healthcare professionals to dictate, review, um, edit, and electronically sign documents and, and use intelligent automation tools as well to, to streamline workflow processes. And um, as I said, our ability to integrate with any PaaS or EPR streamlines the entire documentation process. So instantly populating documents with relevant patient demographics and clinic visit information, saving healthcare professionals, professionals having to dictate that information. Um, Clinicians have the option to self-edit and sign the reports in real time themselves using speech recognition or have the option of sending to one or more designated secretaries for a review. And I think this is one of the key aspects of T-Pro versus some of the other speech recognition suppliers in the market is that we're providing flexibility in terms of how clinicians can document the the encounter. They have the ability to self-edit and sign reports themselves or utilize their in-house or medical secretarial team to proofread the speech recognized text themselves or on their behalf. Or they can actually leverage TPRO's external transcription services uh, to proofread the speech recognized text. So they're not, we're not forcing them uh, into a particular mode. And so oftentimes, adoption of speech recognition uh, has never got, never got off the ground because you're all of a sudden asking clinicians to create self evident sign uh, letters themselves, whereas previously their secretaries would have done so. So it's leveraging speech recognition uh, and the benefits of this, but also just having the option of, of sending this to a secretary to... Um, to edit or proofread speech recognized text on their behalf. Uh, finally, just in terms of the correspondence workflow, we have an electronic distribution module which enables the automatic routing of a uh, signed clinical correspondence to the patient's GP, uh, the patient themselves, or can be sent or saved automatically back uh, to the electronic health record, um, my health record, for example, or any other downstream systems such as outward mailing service providers. So TPRO can facilitate not just the creation of these letters, but also the electronic distribution of correspondence to uh, uh, multiple systems. Liam, we just got a question from the floor and for the group, which uh, I think is really, really uh, pertinent time to explore that. But what, what real-time savings have you seen from clients so far in some of the deployments that you've done? I, I can actually answer that. I did a uh, a project recently with a, a large uh, sort of acute hospital organization. So they had three acute hospitals and two satellite clinics. And we did a, a kind of a benefits realization study with them where we did a couple of time and motion studies. And we went through the different roles in the organization. And the clinicians themselves, um, they they were saving three to four hours a week of time doing documentation which is 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 fairly impressive when you think about it but as a as a total of the whole it's it's not a huge amount um and i think you know one of the important things in terms of managing expectations is this is not kind of a silver bullet at the end of the day the the clinician still has to document the encounter so they still have to pick up a device and dictate a letter or whatever it is no one's going to do their documentation for them um, so 
it's the clinician saving is all about those kind of little micro automations that I was talking about. And obviously the speech recognition, there's certain bits within that, that, that really speed things up and Liam will, will show you that. Um, but the, the time and cost savings across the rest of the workflow is where the real benefits are. So yeah. we, we, this example of this one organization, they had 430 or so medical secretaries and those 430 medical secretaries were never able to keep up with the requirements in terms of producing documentation. And that led to backlogs. So they then they were outsourcing and they outsourced loads of typing to a couple of suppliers and those suppliers were returning documents. And then the secretaries were getting back these documents, fixing them. The consultants were having to sign them and then they're getting put in the post. It's all so. You, you're sort of creating work, solving a problem and creating one is, is at the same time. So when we introduced our platform, we had maybe 20 or 30% of the clinicians that were really kind of forward thinking, enthusiastic. They wanted to use speech recognition. They said, right, no, we're going for this. And so out of, out of about 1,200, I think we had 280 something who just went straight to that real time self-editing. I'm going to do my own documentation day one. So that percentage of documentation then gets alleviated from the medical secretaries. And then for the, the actual time and motion studies, we were able to show that the medical secretaries are 70% more efficient in terms of the typing and the amount of work they're able to get through. So for the, the quantity that's still going through the medical secretaries, that was 70% more efficient. And so they were able to remove all of their outsourcing so there's a huge saving for the organization on the outsourcing. The medical secretaries are more efficient. The consultants are happier um, because they've got more intuitive and user-friendly devices. And then you have some consultants doing their own dictation and their mm -hmm. own self-editing, which means you're able to then lay on clinical services without having to have the administrative support to back those up. And then the kicker for this was that they actually then as the adoption grew, so over the sort of six, we're six months into the project now, so that original 285 who were doing the self editing, that's now gone to over 500. So they now have excess capacity in their medical secretaries. And part of their business case um, is that they've they've kind of said, well, look, how many how many secretarial vacancies do we have, which we now don't need to fill? What's the, what's the natural attrition rate? So without sort of, you know, chopping jobs or anything, you know, on PC like that, there's the natural attrition that they don't have to replace staff as they go on. So not only have they created this efficiency in the clinicians and the secretarial team, they've removed the outsourcing expenses and the cost, they've eliminated all their backlogs, and then they're able to continually positively actually take that efficiency and saving and apply that to their budgets year on year so the system has paid for itself already and it's now returning a return on investment every year for them so in terms of you know back to the question what what are the real life kind of efficiencies it's it's not just in that clinician time so there is clinician time saving but it's the rest of the organization the rest of the workflow as well uh, thank you john that's a great example and uh hope we answered that question for the audience Liam, I'll hand back to you. We are sort of getting close to that sort of 30 minute mark. So uh, if you just press on, then we'll get to some Q&A after this. Yeah, I think I'll actually just jump <clears> straight <throat> into the, the demonstration piece. I had one sort of work, one other uh, workflow scenario uh, where speech recognition can, is uh, predominantly deployed uh, using yep. speech recognition. That's in sort of hands-free or pathology workflows. Um, so the first example or speech recognition workflow I wanted to demonstrate is uh, typically can be used uh, using speech recognition for um, producing outpatient documentation. So here what I have on screen is whereby TPRO can be used as an integrated extension of any PAS or system. Um, so it uses with a, an intuitive task view. Um, so this displays all dictations uh, which are indexed and searchable using multiple filters, including you know, patient name, ID, alternative patient ID, um, author type, and so on. Um, to record a new dictation, I just simply click on this Create Task button. 
Here, then, I can select from a patient list. And normally, this is configured via um, a clinic code. And we would integrate typically with any PAS or via HL7 messaging. So we can take an ADT feed, uh, which populates or allows clinicians to select from a patient list, as I said, typically configured by clinic code. They can also choose from a specific author group, as well as specify the document type, and also choose the priority status. If I select urgent, for example, it'll be highlighted in red as shown here previously. Um, you can import dynamic or create new template reports within TPRO, which are then pre-populated with the relevant GP and patient name and address. Uh, users also have access to additional uh, features or productivity tools within the text editor, such as adding notes or comments, as well as adding attachments, as well as the ability to view previous or contextually appropriate patient records. So I have the option or ability to view correspondence that may have been dictated on this particular patient, even by a different clinician in the organization. Uh, using TPRO's integrated or front-end speech recognition, I can then, or clinicians are then able to document the encounter. The above patient, as you know, was admitted via MPHED, full stop. Recent episode of dizziness leading to falls, full stop. Markedly hypertensive when assessed with yourself, full stop. Mild abdominal discomfort identified, full stop. New paragraph, mild anemia noted, full stop. CT abdomen demonstrated a concerning right-sided colonic abnormality, full stop. Received a full colonoscopy comment, which identified a suspicious mass, full stop. Next field. Insert previous medications. Next field. Insert previous diagnosis. New paragraph. Now, just to explain just so what I had done there, just to create the the, the narrative. Um, Tebro or contextually understands that the. the uh, patient for out-of-the-box accuracy, or the, the clinician, I should say, for out-of-the-box accuracy, um, and converts speech to text in real time. Um, I can also use voice navigation commands to navigate throughout the template using commands such as next field. And I can also then insert clinical information such as diagnosis or medications, uh, which can be pulled from any PAS or EPR system. So whilst I can use you know, real-time or narrative-based dictation, I can also insert clinical information into the relevant uh, fields like medications or diagnosis. Down the bottom right hand corner, I then have the option to either finalize the report myself or have the option of sending to a medical secretary, which would send to a uh, designated or centralized typing tool who would edit the speech recognized text on my behalf. Um, if I'm happy and I wish to um, finalize the report myself, it'll then insert a copy of my signature. And if this letter, or we have the electronic distribution workflows enabled, a copy of that outpatient report can then be automatically saved back to your EPR, as well as sent to any other downstream systems like GP messaging brokers, like HealthLink, or outward mailing service providers. And that, as I said, is using TPRO's uh, integrated electronic distribution model. So not only are we enabling clinicians to uh, electronically or use speech recognition to document the patient encounter, we also handle the distribution of the, this outpatient correspondence as well. Excellent. Right, so what I'm going to do, yeah, so um, one last workflow if we have time, uh, Scott. Um, sure. I just, yeah, yeah. Very, very quickly, so I just wanted to uh, show, so the, the, the previous workflow, workflow I just demonstrated was for outpatient documentation. I just wanted to show users how they can use our speech recognition for inpatient documentation. Um, so for the TPRO Dictate app, now the very same workflow functionality that I've just demonstrated on the web is also available on their mobile device. So they can track the status of dictations. They can even amend priority of dictations already uploaded. So one for Alan Partridge, I can now uh, amend or uh, bump up to urgent. And then to document a new encounter or note, I can just simply press the red record button. I'm prompted to select from a patient list. And then I can choose from various different workflow or group types. Now, in this case, when I select the word round note and I dictate something, this audio note will, based on a perceived speech recognition accuracy score, if more or greater than 95%, it'll be returned to the clinician, me in this case, to review, edit, and sign. Whereas if it's less than 95%, it'll be automatically routed to our medical secretary, secretarial team. So I'll just dictate something short here. 
This 16 year old was admitted through the emergency department with about a 24 hours history of RIF pain, full stop. He was feeling nauseated, but not vomiting, full stop. He has no urinary symptoms, full stop. He had a CT scan, which confirmed acute appendicitis, full stop, new paragraph. I will keep him under review, full stop. So you have the normal or typical recording functionality, just using my thumb, I can insert or overwrite a, a particular passage of audio. I can play back the audio and then just simply press send to upload the recording. Now, this is using TPRO's back-end speech recognition technology. So whilst it's not real time, um, the audio is sent to our speech recognition server to be transcribed, as mentioned, based on a perceived recognition accuracy score. If greater than 95%, it'll then be returned to the author to review. And as you can see up at the top of my screen, I've just received a notification to say that I have a letter or note to approve. And so this is the speech recognized text. Uh, it appears as though it is a hun almost 100% or in fact 100%. So I can either uh, play back the audio, I can edit as well. So if I wish to edit or add additional text, I can do so. And then once I'm happy with the uh, note, which has been transcribed, I then just click approve and one last time approve. And for any inpatient documentation, as I said, this enables clinicians to not be tied to a desk and actually document the encounter or ward note in this case uh, from using their preferred mobile device. So once approved, a copy of that ward round note is automatically saved back to the EPR, enabling health organizations for this particular workflow type to achieve a fully paperless workflow solution. Wow, excellent. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure the people on uh, audience has uh, seen something they probably haven't seen before. So uh, thanks for sharing that. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible what you guys have done. Um, I did mention that uh, we'd have a bit of a hard close a little bit early. We got a little bit over, but uh, I think that's pertinent to just absolutely see that demonstration so you guys get an understanding of what it is that uh, we're talking about. Um, if anyone needs to jump off now, we really thank you for your attendance. Um, we have got a few questions that are coming in from the floor, which is uh, great. So I'll, I'll just fire a couple of these at you. Perhaps if we could, um, I've got three or four questions, we can keep them. Uh, Answers a little bit shorter, but if look if there's anything else that we want to cover off later on, uh, we'll certainly uh, reach out and be in touch around uh, how this works uh, so that we can get some clarity around it. One of the questions we did have was uh, around change management and the resistance of doctors to to pick this up. Um, they've been doing it the same way for so long. How, how have you guys managed that, and, uh, and and what are some of the things that people should be looking for there? <clears throat> uh, I'll take this in. Yeah. Uh, so we we basically as part of any um, commercial arrangement that we have with hospitals we're very keen to partner long term with with clients so what we do is we build in incentives for ourselves to get people to adopt speech recognition so as <clears throat> as the as the savings from speech recognition are applied the bills for the hospital go down but our margin goes up because speech recognition is a higher margin product for us than transcription or typing or dictation uh, so we we constantly sort of deal with the change management and the project management. We put people on the ground uh, and we do a lot of kind of workflow reviews and mapping of um, various workflows and things like that um, within the hospitals to make that work. Uh, great. Um, another question, just quickly, we've got a few minutes left. Where's the data stored? So the, the, the data is, so we, we have a fairly flexible system that can be deployed on premise. Um, but our, the majority of our clients uh, use our hosted cloud version, which is stored in AWS, which is in Sydney. Okay. Excellent. Um, another question from the floor. Have you used this in other areas of the hospital, uh, such as admin, general services, security, or is it really, really focused just on the clinician side of things? Uh, it is used in other areas, but it's, it's fairly medically focused around the, the workflows and things like that. But obviously... You know, this could be, you know, producing a letter could be turned to admin services or anything like that in the same way. Okay. Um, another question for the floor. For, for, for some of those organisations that perhaps are, are less um, modernised, if you like, what, what, where did this journey start for them? <clears throat> so basically the, the starting point for the majority of our clients is they have a problem that they need solving and the first way to solve that problem is just to map your existing workflows and replicate them in our system so you don't change anything really for the users in terms of how they dictate how they type the way they use the system 
but the technology and the tools and the automation give you a natural saving or a natural efficiency. So the starting point is always just rip and replace your existing system, replicate that with the least disruption possible, and then work from there. And you will have, you know, you'll have early adopters and you'll have people that want to kind of run with the technology, but the people who don't want to do it, you let it just silently work away in the background and it just improves that process for them. And, and ultimately, I'd imagine they just come on board with it because they see there are others. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, it, 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 there's, it talks they, they, honestly, they honestly don't know there's any change half the time. They just dictate yeah. something and get a letter back and they don't care how it's, how it's produced. How it's done. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, another question was around um, APIs <clears throat> and open APIs. Are, are there any systems that you haven't been able to integrate with or is, is, uh, it, is it open to everything? No, yeah, so we, we've, we've a, a fairly open set of um, APIs. We then also have um, our own abstracted integration environment. So from a healthcare point of view, we have a fully functional um, integration cluster, essentially, where we can handle all HL7 and Fire-based interfaces as well. So there's, there's a full API which people can leverage themselves, but we have an integration team that deal with a lot of those integrations. We're actually integrated with, I think it's the last count is 300-ish, 250 to 300 uh, EPRs globally. So there's not okay. a lot we can't match up. Pretty, r relatively agnostic then, yeah. 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 Um, just conscious of time, we, we, we need to wind up in a moment, but last question from the floor was, um, what's the main difference between T-Pro and, and some of the other market leaders or your competitors that you, you come up against at the moment? I think um, nuance has been mentioned and another one here is IMEX, uh, sorry, bigger part, IMEDX. Yeah, so I suppose they're both very good at what they do. Um, nuance is a speech recognition technology provider and they will sell you a technology. Um, what they don't do is they said they don't sell you a workflow. They don't make it work. It's not an enterprise platform. So if you want to talk and words appear on screen, you want to do that very well for you. IMEDX conversely are a, I suppose they're a consolidator and they do have bits of their own software and things like that. But ultimately they're buying in and reselling software to um, facilitate their um, medical transcription business. And they have, lots of people typing and they run that business really well so if you want a document typing imedx do that really well what we do is we provide a platform that has all of those things and we're not a you know we're not providing a one-stop shop or you have to have multiple vendors if you want the two it's it's a platform and you can pick and choose and have flexible workflows that provide the full range and the full suite of sort of document production technology everything all within the same thing Excellent. Look, uh, really appreciate everyone attending today. Thanks very much. Uh, we're getting really close to the end of time. In terms of closing this out, I'd like to thank uh, Liam, obviously, for, for, for his, his thoughts and also Jonathan around uh, where things are going in this space. And uh, I'm sure you, you'll have lots of questions uh, to pose. Um, we will be sending out a recording, <clears throat> excuse me, to everyone as you need to see fit. And uh, if you want to reach out to uh, us, feel free to do so. We certainly welcome the opportunity to talk to you more about some of the challenges you're experiencing and uh, to be able to demonstrate further how a solution like T-Pro can actually uh, assist you in, the, in meeting those challenges. So thanks again for everyone uh, across the globe. We all are well done uh, and uh, look forward to uh, talking again soon. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks for your time.